The second chapter is about structure and physiography of India. By structure here we mean the geological structure. And by physiography we mean the different type of physical features that exist in different parts of your country. Physiographically India is divided into six major parts. And that is on the basis of uh, the different type of physical features that is broadly seen in a particular part of your country. For example, in the north you have the mountains. In the south you have a plateau. Along the plateau on the eastern and the western side you have the coastal plains. On the western side of your country you have the Thar Desert region. And uh, in between the northern mountains and the peninsular plateau, you have the northern plains, the Indo Gangetic plains. Besides, another physiographic division of your country are the islands. There are more than 250 islands in your country. So, that is a physiographic division of your country. Here, you are studying, in this chapter, you are studying about uh, uh, the physiography of your country. You will also be studying about the geological structure of your country. By geological structure we mean that uh, what variation has been there in the formation of, of different broad divisions of the country. In which period a particular part has been formed and what has been the nature of its formation, the way of its formation. On that basis, we identify that region as geologically different from one another. And uh, on that basis, we identify three geological structures in a broad way in our country. So, as far as geological structure is concerned, India is divided into, into, geol into three geological divisions. And these three geological divisions or the regions are the peninsular block, the Himalayas and, the and uh, uh, other peninsular mountains, the Indo-Gangetic plain or we can say that Indo-Ganga Brahmaputra plain. So these are the three geological divisions of our country. But when we talk about the physiographic division, we identify six physiographic divisions in our country. So broadly in this chapter, we are going to discuss about uh, the landscape of our country. We have seen in the first chapter where our country is situated. And uh, we have also seen that... Uh, uh, that our country is called a subcontinent, it is a very big country. But here we are going to discuss in detail about the way our the way the landmass of our country was formed, and also we are going to discuss about the special features of different parts of our country which vary from one another. For example, I was talking about the southern part of our country which is a plateau region and that we call the peninsular block. Okay, or the peninsular plateau region. The northern mountains are in the northern part of your country which forms, which stands like a wall separating the Indian landmass with the Asian continent and that makes our country a subcontinent. So it is a mountainous region, it is having a mountainous terrain and so it is, uh, its landscape is completely different from what the landscape is to the south of that region, that is the northern plains. It is a flat alluvial plain and uh, it is a very fertile region where large number of rivers flow. And it has sufficient amount of water also available there. So it is, the, it is like the breadbasket of our country. It is agriculturally very important region. And uh, it is completely different from the region that I was talking about, the, the mountainous region in the north. So we identify them as a, another separate 
physiographic division. But to the west of the Indo-Gangetic plain, we have another, uh, in the state of Rajasthan and some parts of Gujarat, we have a desert region. It is a sandy desert to the west of that, which uh, merges into Pakistan in the state of Pakistan, in the state of Sindh in Pakistan. So, and that region we call the Thar Desert region. So it is a completely different, it is having a completely different landscape. But before that, we are going to, before discussing about the physiography division in our country, we will be first of all discussing about the geological formations, the difference in the geological formations or the geological structure and formation. Okay. Uh, and I have already told you that India can be divided into three geological divisions. And uh, as far as physiography is concerned, India can be divided into six physiographic divisions. That is the difference and that should be clear and there should not be any confusion regarding that. Now, if we talk, start talking about uh, how our country's landmass was formed, we all know that the earth, when the earth was formed, it was in a hot gaseous mass and slowly it started getting cooled down and uh, the, all the process of the formation of this solid land mass on which we human beings live and different other creatures also live that started about 460 million years back. From that time lot of changes have came on the surface of the earth. Initially it was a hot gaseous mass slowly it started getting cooled down and uh, geomorphologists also are of the view that uh, the earth uh, continents or the land mass were, were not at the same place as where it is today. In the earlier times they were at different places and there has been shifting and drifting of the continents from one place to another. You have read about uh, the continental drift theory which was given by Alfred Wegener. So, uh, there was a supercontinent called Pangaea, which ulti ultimately broke down, and uh, the fragments of the supercontinent Pangaea that started drifting into different parts. And this happened because of what the theory of plate tectonics explained, which was a part of the chapter that uh, uh, you might have studied in my absence. Uh, However, so it was this uh, breaking of the Pangaea and the drifting of uh, the different parts of uh, the Pangaea into different directions that the land masses shifted to the place where they are actually today. And that we call the continents and that also led to the formation of the oceans. So uh, this was also the way how our country's landmass was formed. This was the way how our country's landmass was formed. Pangaea broke down into different fragments and the different parts started drifting from one place to another in different directions because of the plate tectonics. The southern part of Pangaea started drifting towards north and northeast. The Indo-Australian plate that started drifting away from Pangaea after it, it broke down, it started moving towards north and northeast, which led to the collision of the Indo-Australian plate with the Chinese plate. And that brought about a big change in the landscape of this region. This event led to the formation of the Himalayan mountains. When the peninsula block, after getting separated from Pangaea, started drifting along with the Indo-Australian plate towards north and northeast, it started compressing the Chinese plate. And because of this compression, it led to folding of the rocks and ultimately that led to the emergence of uh, the Himalayan mountains. Uh, in the northern part of our country. This was how the Himalayan mountains was formed. This is one geological structure 
or you can say this is one geological division of our country. So on the basis of geological structure we divide our country in that way. That is the Himalayan mountains. Besides, I told you that the peninsula block was actually a part of the uh, of Pangaea, the supercontinent. And when it broke down, started drifting towards north and northeast and reached to the place where it is today. And this is how the peninsula plateau was formed. And in between that remained a part of the ocean which we know as, which we used to call, or the which the geologist used to call, it is the Tethys Sea, which slowly got filled up by the sediments brought by the rivers coming out from the Himalayan mountains or the peninsular plateau and which used to drain the water in the Tethys Sea and ultimately by the deposition of the sediments over there it got uh, it got filled up into a flat alluvial plain which we call the Indogangetic Plain. Besides along the uh, besides uh, so that is the third geological division that you can identify you see all these three geological divisions that we are talking about they were, they were formed in different way the peninsula plateau was a part of the Pangaea continent the supercontinent and it broke down from that and started drifting along with the Indo australian plate towards north and northeast and reached to the place where it is today the himalayan mountains which is the second geological division of our country that got, got formed because the peninsula plateau started shifting towards north and northeast and started compressing the Chinese plate which led to the folding of the materials between the peninsula plateau and the Chinese plate which led to the formation of the Himalayan mountains. So it was formed in a different way. So it is another geological structure. So it is another geological division into which we can identify uh, our country. And the third geological division is the Indocangetic plain, which got formed because of the filling of the sediments that was brought by the rivers from both the Himalayan mountains and the peninsula plateau, which continuously dumped the sediments into the Indocangetic plain, and ultimately it got filled up into flat alluvial plain, and that uh, we know as uh, the the Indo-Gangetic Plain, which is one of the most fertile regions of the world, which is in fact the breadbasket for our whole country, because not only it is having very good alluvial soil, but also it is having abundant amount of water flowing through it, through the rivers that flows in the Indo-Gangetic Plain, which has made it so fertile and so agriculturally rich region of our country. So these are completely different uh, these are the regions which are formed in a completely different way. That is why we identify them as a geological dif structures. That is why we identify them as geological divisions. So, uh, another thing that we will be discussing in this chapter is about the physiographic division. And physiographic division actually means the difference in physical features that we find in different parts of the country. And you find six broadly six divisions that we can identify uh, regarding the difference in physical features in different parts of the country and uh, that is the physiographic uh, divisions and we identify them as the northern mountains, the northern plains, the peninsular plateau, the Indian deserts, the coastal plains and the islands. But one thing also should be kept in mind that how Actually, well, uh, it all started with the breaking of Pangaea and the drifting of the peninsular plateau along with the Indo-Australian plate towards north and northeast. The whole process of the formation of the landmass of our country started from there. But you should also understand that there are two forces which act in the formation of the landmass of any place. And that also played an important role in the formation of our country's landmass. And these are called the exogenetic forces and endogenetic forces. We have discussed that while discussing the second chapter, I think, or the third chapter. No, second chapter. 
so uh, um, in the first book so uh, uh, these were the endogen the exogenetic and endogenetic forces that uh, let ultimately combinedly led to the formation of the landscape of our country the endogenetic forces which arises from from within the uh, earth and brings about variations in the landscape and the exogenetic forces which acts from above the earth's surface and tries to level down the land by leading to uh, disintegration of the rocks and erosion of the rock particles and its deposition at different places and ultimately the whole landmass get changed because of that so both the endogenetic and exogenetic forces have played a very important role in the formation of the landmass of our country